Hi, welcome to the Gainsplainer. I'm Jeff the Gainsplainer and today I'm Gainsplaining Carson City. So I have set Carson City up as a two player game. It can play up to six, but it's just as easy to play with the two. The rules are the same. There are only going to be four rounds on this game, but the very first thing that happens is that each player in this order, so green will go first, followed by blue, and that order is important, will choose what character they're going to play with for this round. So for example, green might choose this one and blue might choose this one. Now what these do is mostly they'll give you a benefit at the beginning of the round. So let's run through it really quickly. This one gives you one extra meeple to be able to use during the game. This gives you nine extra money straight away. This gives you eight extra money straight away or it doubles the income on one of the properties and you can choose which property. That will happen at the end of the round. I'll talk more about income in a second. This one enables you to purchase these guys here for 50% less and you get two extra roads. So I'll give him his roads straight away. And this one allows him to place one of these wherever he would like and he would like to place it just there. I'll explain why everyone is in these positions later on. Once that's happened, you're then looking at the top number. So blue has four, green has five, which means the lower number is going first. Blue will go first. Now that we've worked out player order and we kind of understand that, let's have a look at what you're actually doing. The game itself is realistically on these spots at the top. And when we get to the end of the round, each of those spots is going to be actioned from here, coming along the track, and then back along. And we'll stop when we get to this. This token will move one this way, giving you four more guys coming in for next round. Or when it moves here, you'll get five guys. Here, you'll get five guys. Now, you can choose at any point to stop doing stuff. When, and it's called a pass action. When you choose to pass, you'll move your marker down onto the bottom track to the lowest number available. What does each spot do? I'm glad you asked. Let's run through it as quick as we can. The first spot gives you four money. As many meeple as you like can go there. So green might put one there, blue might put one there, green might put another one there. Green's going to get eight money when we get to this and blue will get four money. Really easy. The only other one that is not going to be fought over is this one here. So as many meeples as like can go there and they will each get one road for each meeple there. Every other spot will be fought over if more than one meeple goes to that spot. This one gives you three extra guns for the round. This one gives you three more roads. I'll talk about this one in a moment, but it is about uh, building down on the main board. Each of these work exactly the same. They are buildings that you can build onto parcels of land you already own. So currently we've got this set up. Um, if green's turn happens, he might choose to build this one. If blue also wishes to build that one, they're going to have to have a jewel, and I'll talk about that in a moment, to see who gets that. Blue could choose to spend a whole bunch more money to purchase the same thing, because the cost of the tile, when we get to it, is listed at the bottom. Bearing in mind that in this game, blue is going to be purchasing things for half the price. So if blue goes there, he's going to be purchasing that tile for five money instead of 10 money. And we'll go through what each of the tiles actually means in a moment as well. Let's just get to the end of this track. You don't have to place the tiles that you've purchased until you get to this point, at which point you will choose to either place them here on the board or at one of your spots on the board or put them to the side. You can keep as many to the side as you like, it's just they're not earning you any income. If you have a guy here, that will get you two money per tile that you have down here. So if green goes there, he would be getting six money because there's six, three green tiles down there. If blue went there, he'd be getting four money. This is getting you two dollars per gun that you have. Once again, this guy only, green only has one gun, blue only has one gun at the moment. So they would only be getting $2 for that. Placing some of these 
will get you more guns, which would help you out with that. Picking up that will get you more guns, which will help you out with that. This spot is basically a gambling spot. So what would happen is you roll the two dice and whoever rolled that would be getting six money in a five plus a one. So it's whatever that roll of the dice is, that's the money coming in. Then we get the money in or the income from the buildings. So I'll talk about that all in conjunction in a moment. Everyone on these orange spots, by the way, everyone is able to access them. You don't actually put any guys on those orange spaces. They kind of just sit and just, they're there. So we remember to do them on the way through. Anyone who selected this one would be gaining one point for every two of these tokens that they have. Uh, that's built on or not built on, by the way. This is gaining points for every pair of guns. You get one point, similar to here. This is getting a point for every building that has been built. So any buildings that have been bought from here and put in your own pile, not on the actual board, don't get scored when you get to here. These ones are getting you points for the amount of money that you have. You will have to spend that money, but that's okay because you'll have to spend it anyway, most likely. So if you put a guy here, you're going to get one point for every two money spent. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, points are actually quite hard to come by at the beginning of the game. Once we've kind of got to the end of this track, we go to this phase, which is the cleanup phase. You need to reduce down to the amount of money that is written on the bottom of the card. So if you have, for example, this card, you can only have $20 at the end of that round. So starting the next round with $20. Whereas if you have this card, you'll start the next round with $60 or maximum of $60. And so you can get rid of $10 for one point, or obviously you can get rid of $90 for nine points. But if you're getting rid of that much money, it's probably worthwhile going to one of these because you're going to get rid of your $90 for 45 points. That's a huge difference. Now, obviously, once that's happened, this moves on. And so the smallest amount of money that you can get rid of is $3 rather than the $2 that were available. So let's go and move its way up. And this is how we track where we're up to in the game. This is the last round. So $5 equals one point as opposed to $10. You can get double the points by doing that. Now that in essence is the game. The problem comes when you have two meeples from different players going after the same spot. It doesn't matter if it's up here or if it's down here. And I'll talk about the purchasing stuff down there in a moment, but it doesn't actually matter. It's worked out the same way. What happens is you add the number of guns that you have. So at the moment, each of the players only has one gun, and you roll a die. If that was the roll, blue has one. So blue has a six versus green's one. You could also add any meeples that are left in your personal supply. However, the winner would lose any cowboys to the general supply, while the loser would take the cowboy back to their own supply. This cowboy would also come back to their own supply. I don't think in the rules I really spoke about attacks. What an attack is, is if this player puts their token there and isn't challenged, they're going to get half of the income of that building on this round. If that player is challenged, however, the winner will cause whatever's gonna happen. So if he is challenged and is beaten, then Blue will maintain all of his incomes. If he's challenged and he beats the blue, then once again, he will take half of that income. If there is a tie, the player who is furthest to the left on this track would be the winner. The winner can then perform the action or choose not to perform the action. So if it was an action up here, he may decide that he doesn't actually need roads, but he doesn't want the other players to have roads. So he's gone, oh, I could do that, but I'm not going to. Now, there's nothing in the rules that says to remove revolvers out of the game, so once they've been used, my assumption, and if I'm wrong, please correct me below, please have a look below if anyone has actually made a comment on this, but my assumption is that revolvers stay with the player for the entire game. So if you have a certain number of revolvers, that's always the number that you have. Now, parcels of land, so this spot here, if you are to purchase a parcel of land, what you're doing is you're paying $1 
for the parcel. You're then also paying $1 for every mountain, house, or building that is placed next to it. So at the moment, this parcel just here would cost three money. One, two, three. Also, if there's anything on that parcel, so if he wishes to buy this mountain, it's going to cost him one for the parcel, one for the mountain. So that's two, one for this, three, one for that mountain, four. So we're looking in orthogonally adjacent spaces. Once you've built your parcels, you're looking at putting these buildings onto them. Now, there's a couple of funky rules to kind of take notice of, and each of them is slightly different. Each building type has its own rules, but there's a few general things that we can kind of get on top of without worrying too much about them. First up is the mines. For example, if a mine was built here, it would be worth no points because mines get you points or money, should I say, by being close to mountains. So if it was here, this mine would be worth three money because of that mountain. If this mine was built here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which means that this mine is worth 12 money because of those mountains. Now, if green were to purchase one of those mountains at a later stage, this would go down in value because blue can't mine in the green site. So he's only next to now three mountains. I think now you can see why they have set up where they have set up. The ranchers get points for not being next to stuff. So if I put a ranch down there, he has seven spots around him that are not filled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If this mountain wasn't here, that would be worth eight, but it is only worth seven at the moment. Now with both the mines and the ranches, you'll notice on the bottom corner, there's a little revolver or pistol. That means that when you build that building, you would gain one of these into your supply. The other thing to notice is there's a little house symbol in the top right hand corner of the ranch. That doesn't mean that you add a house, but it does mean that that tile is worth a house. So if you have other tiles built that get points for being next to houses, and it's next to the ranch, it's going to get, get points. All of the other building types must be connected to the main city via a road. So you cannot build a bank here. It doesn't work. You can, however, build a bank there because it's connected by a road. You can build the bank there because it is connected by a road. Once that bank is built, the player must also build a house. It doesn't matter where the house is, but it must be connected by a road. If a house spot is totally surrounded, so all of the spots around it are covering, we can put a second house into that. So these symbols in the top are showing what we're looking for. So this one has two adjacent houses. So one, two. And once he has mines, he'll get another one for each mine. That's what that little symbol there is. I think that makes enough sense. I think that's enough information for you to be able to start the game. I will leave it there. If you wish to find out more, you can look up the information in the rule book. Uh, for what thing it, what each tile does and what each tile is. But the number that is pointing up towards this black is what your income will be. So when you get to this orange spot and take an income, you're just looking at the board. Anything that's on your colored tile, you're taking the top amount and that's your income for the turn. Please go ahead and watch my game's play to get a real good feel for how this game plays. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you wish to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email at thegamesplanner at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplanner to keep up to date with the games that I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.